today we are going to learn about implicit differentiation. Our objective today is that students will be able to find dy dx, that is the derivative for equations. that are defined implicit. Okay, now right away, you might be thinking, oh no, what is all this? There's words here that I do not know. Well, what does it mean for something to be defined implicitly? Well, before we talk about things that are defined implicitly, let's talk about something that is defined. Let's talk about what that means. What does it mean for something to be defined implicitly? And what is the opposite of that? Now, first of all, does anyone know what the word implicit means? Hmm. Well, before we talk about implicit, let's first talk about the opposite of implicit. What does explicit mean? In, not in math land, in, in, uh, in real life, what does explicit mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone, someone in, in the private chat said noticeable. Yeah, that's correct. Explicit means in the open. in the open, or obvious, or noticeable. I know that, I know that, um, uh, just for an example that most people will be familiar with, what does it mean for it to have X? Song to have explicit lyrics. Well, explicit doesn't mean vulgar or rude or swearing. Explicit means in the open, unhidden. In the, in the context of, say, music lyrics, it means uncensored. The opposite of explicit is implicit. An implicit means hidden. Or hard to notice. Okay, great. So what do these mean?
So what do these mean in terms of math? Well, I'm going to go ahead and rather than moving on to another board, I'll just erase this. Will anyone yell at me if I erase this? Okay, no yelling? All right. So in math, we usually talk of when we use explicit or implicit, it is usually referring to formulas. So an explicit formula An explicit formula is a formula that is solved for some variable. For example, <laughs> sorry, for example, A equals one half pi r squared. This is the area of a circle. It is nicely solved for area already, or just a regular old function f of x equals 3x squared plus 2. Now let's say 3 times 2 to the x. I feel like it's So this, the, you know what, nah, let's go with this. Okay, 3x squared plus 2. Here, we are nicely solved for our variable, which is the output of this function. So that's an explicit formula, and all of the derivatives we've done so far have been for the form formulas written explicitly. You could find the derivative of this with respect to r easily enough. It would be 2 pi r. You could find the derivative of this with respect to x easily enough. It would be 6x. What then is a formula defined implicitly. These are what we'll be working with today. An implicit formula is a formula that isn't solved for any particular variable. For example, uh, back in Algebra 2, you guys worked with uh, hyperbolas, hyperbolas, ellipses, so something like x squared over 4 plus y squared over 16 equals 1. This should, this would graph a uh, ellipse, right? Another example might be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Neither of these are solved for any for particular forms. For particular variables. Uh-oh, so So, 
before we go on to talk about the actual calculus involved, let's take a look at the at this at for example. Let's look at the graph. Let's look at graphs of uh, some implicit. Yeah. <laughs> let's look at the graphs of some implicitly defined formulas. There we go. So for example, the example, the example we gave was x squared over four plus y squared over 16 equals one. An ellipse. You worked with those last, uh, last uh, back in pre-Q. No problem. But you could also have other interestingly defined functions. For example, you might have, say, x cubed plus y to the third power minus 9xy equals 0. This cool little loopy doop. Or even something a little bit simpler, like x equals y squared. This actually, well, this actually is an implicit fu function. I realize, though, that I, uh, I realize, though, that uh, I made a mistake with the way I defined it, because this is solved for a full hmm. So, I didn't say particular variable. I should say for any particular Dependent variable. There we go. You, that dependent variable is usually y. So if you have some function that isn't solved for y, it's an implicit function. Or that isn't solved for some dependent variable. Area depends on radius. F of x depends on our my bad. All right. So So now, uh, if we go back to these graphs for a moment, now something that you might notice is that these is that these graphs are not necessarily of functions. This graph that we've drawn here is is not a function because it fails the vertical line test. That said, just because it's not a function doesn't mean that its slope at a certain point isn't something that could be useful to know. We might want to know when does our function have an undefined slope? Or when, sorry, it's function. When does the when does the uh, graph have an undefined slope? When does it have a slope of zero? Questions like that. Those are useful questions and things that we and th questions that uh, and questions where we would potentially want to know an answer. So how can we find those answers? How can we get values for slopes? Well, by taking the derivative, because the derivative is the slope. But how on earth are we going to take the derivative of something like x cubed plus y cubed minus 9xy equals 0? The answer is with some ingenious usage of both the chain rule and algebra. So, I'm 
slowly running out of fresh members. So these ones they bought on Amazon have been lasting way longer than the ones that the school gives them. So let's find dy dx if y squared equals x. So how are we going to do this? It's actually not too difficult. To find dy dx, differentiate both sides. Find the derivative, that is. Differentiate. Both sides of the equation. Now I'm going to write more to this sentence, so leave a little gap there in your notes, but let's see what happens when we try to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So, so on the right side, what is the derivative of just x? One. One, okay, that's pretty easy. The left side is where things get kind of messy. Now, we're taking font to find the derivative of y with respect to x. So this normally would only work when, you know, this is means that our equation is y and our variable is x. Now, this doesn't have an x in it, so I can't really take the, take the derivative. But I could use the chain rule on it. Okay. So ignoring the inside for a moment, what's the derivative of a thing squared? What do we do with the exponent? Uh, negative, what is it negative? Well, we bring it down first, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we'll bring it down. Now using the chain rule, we'll leave the, leave the inside intact, but we'll multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, what's the derivative of y with respect to x? Well, the derivative of y with respect to x actually has its own symbol, dy dx. So we'll multiply by the derivative of the inside. So we get 2y dy dx. <clears throat> so what we did is we are treating y as a function of x, because it is, or it can be, as a function of x, and we're using the chain rule. So this is a little bit subtle, but again, like if this was, I don't know, sine of x, then you'd first take the derivative of the outside and you leave the inside intact. And then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's all we're doing here. The derivative of the outside wants us to take the exponent and move it down and then subtract the exponent by one, two minus one, whatever. But you leave the inside, which is a y, intact. And then you multiply by the inside. So kind of the pro tip here, is that the derivative of y is dy dx. Remember that the dy dx stands for the derivative of y with respect to x. So the derivative of y is 
the derivative of y. Go figure. But anyway, we're not done yet. We want to find dy dx. Now we know that 2 times y times dy dx equals 1. Is there some way that I could get dy dx on its own? Subtract 2y? You can subtract 2y? This is 2y times dy dx, yeah? Oh, um, divide, divide. Divide by 2y. Hey, we found dy dx. We got it on its own. We're done. Fair enough? Yeah. Now, a couple things that I want to warn you about with regard to this thing. Note that we didn't get just dy dx equals some function of x. So we can't really graph this thing very easily. This isn't something that you graph, typically. Instead, what you do is you might be asked to find the slope at a specific point. So it might say, give you a function. So you might be given a function defined implicitly, and then it will want you to find the slope of the function at some point. You just plug those values for x and y into this function here. So let's try an example. Well, let's try another example. Now, first of all, I know what you're thinking. What you're thinking is, oh, I don't feel good. Now, in practice, this is a little bit of a subtle reasoning for why we do things the way we do. But as long as you remember that you're using the chain rule on all of your y's, and remember that the derivative of y is dy dx, then you'll be fine. So there is another way kind of short that too, remembering how to handle implicit Let's do another example. Can I take this away? Let's find the slope of x squared plus y squared equals 25 at the point 3, negative 4. OK. So, uh, how could, what's the, yeah, how can you find the slope? What's the thing that can tell us slopes? Starts with a D. Rhymes with derivative. So remember that whenever you're finding the slope, that's the same as finding the derivative. That is what derivatives are used for. That's why we care about derivatives is because they tell us slopes. So we want to find the derivative of this thing at the point 3, negative 4. All right, fantastic. 
So we have, yeah. get out of here, dead marker. <sighs> you know what you did. So we have x squared plus y squared equals And we want to find the derivative. So it is defined implicitly. It's not nicely solved for y. So we're going to want to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x, treating y as a function of x and u in the chain rule. OK, so on the right side, what's the derivative of 25? Zero. Mm -hmm. The derivative of any constant is zero. Now, what's the derivative of x squared? 2x. 2x. Now, this is the part that's going to be a little bit trickier. So, what's the derivative of y squared? Well, ignoring if we treat this, if we uh, treat the inside as like a function of x, let's use the chain rule. To find the derivative of the outside, we bring down the 2. And we leave the inside un unchanged. The exponent is 1, but anything to the 1 power is itself. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. And what's the derivative of y? dy over dx. Exactly. OK. Now, we want to find the slope. So we're not quite done yet. We need to do a little bit of algebra here. What can the, should I do to isolate dy dx? Well, I want to get dy, I want to find the derivative. Here's the derivative right there. I don't yet have, but it's not yet on its own. You can't yet plug numbers in to find the slope. So I need to get this dy dx on its own. So we can subtract 2x from both sides. Now we have 2y dy dx equals negative 2x. Now what? Well, I can divide both sides by 2y. These cancel, and I get dy dx is equal to negative x over y. OK, so that's our formula for the slope, the derivative. Now, we want to find the slope at the point 3, negative 4. Now, of course, so what is our x value that we want to plug in? What is the x value of this point? 3. 3. And what's our y value? Negative 4. Can this be simplified? Yeah. Into what? Negative 3 over 4. A negative divided by a negative? Oh, positive. Oh, uh, 3 over 4. Yeah. So the slope at the point 3, negative 4 is going to be positive 3 over 4. Let's go ahead and graph this function, and let's see if that looks about right. So, da -da 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 -da. whoa. Green, Desmos, share. Okay.
So we have x squared plus y squared equals 25, and we wanted to find the slope at 3, negative 4. Write 3, down 4. So does that slope look, does that look about right? 3 over 4 is, should be a positive slope which we see it's going up. Three over four means that the slope is less than one, so it's less than a 45 degree angle. Yeah, that looks about right to me. All right, now implicit differentiation is something, so kind of a bit of a shortcut here to remembering how to do it. Now note that when I took the derivative of x squared, I got 2x. When I took the derivative of y squared, I got 2y times dy dx. So kind of a shortcut, a way to think about it without necessarily using the chain rules, is find the derivative normally. But whenever you take the derivative, of a, of a y expression, or of a y term, Simply multiply by dy dx. Okay, let's try another example. This time the algebra will be a little bit more complicated. But it's also going to give us a strategy that can let us tackle basically any implicit differentiation problem. Okay, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Try one more. This one will be a little bit uglier, but okay. Find dy dx or x squared minus xy plus uh, y squared equals 7. All right. And in doing this, doing this problem, we're also going to learn the process. Okay, step one. Differentiate both sides. Remember that the derivative of y is dy dx. Okay, so we're starting with x squared minus xy plus y squared equals seven. Take the derivative of every term. 
So well, right side's easy, derivative of seven, zero. You know what, I'm gonna make sure. The derivative of x squared, enough. Derivative of x squared is two x. Now, what's the derivative of negative xy? Well, this is a product rule. Let's see, the first times the second, the derivative of the second, so, the, so that would be negative x times dy dx. Plus the derivative, of, or the second times the derivative of the first, so y times negative one. Plus, now what's the derivative of y squared? Well, the derivative of just y is 2y, but we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is dy dx. Again, note that whenever I find the derivative of y, I'm just basically multiplying it by dy dx. So derivative of y squared is 2y dy dx. Okay, now what? Well, I want to isolate the dy dx. So I'd isolate it the same way that I would any other variable. It looks like I have these two dy dx terms. So I should gather. Collect the dy dx term. on one side of the equation. So that means getting rid of the 2x and getting rid of the negative. So subtract 2x from both sides, add a y to both sides. So we end up with y minus 2x. Okay, I'm going to put the positive term first because that generally looks a little nicer. All right, easy enough. So we collected all the dy dx terms on one side, but we're not, we don't yet have dy dx on its own. Now we can factor out the dy dx. Both of these are being multiplied by dy dx, so we'll factor or reverse distribute, if you prefer, out the dy dx. Okay, now, now if I just divide both sides by 2y minus x, I'll have dy dx on its own. So we will solve for dy dx, get the dy dx on its own. In this case, that means dividing by 2y minus x. There we go. And this is the process. Or implicit differentiation. You do a little bit of calculus at the beginning, but then the rest of this is just algebra. 
All right. So today we learned about implicit differentiation. We learned what an implicitly defined equation is and what an explicitly defined equation is. We saw how we can take the derivative of an implicitly derived, of, yeah, implicitly defined equation. All right. Well, anyway, I think that that is all we needed to cover for today. I will, there will be a check for understanding. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day. Also, it's good to be back. I missed you guys. Bye-bye.